All right, here we are. The winds are blowing upwards of over 30 miles an hour, getting closer to 40 mile an hour gust. It's definitely a horrible day for shooting. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit that 200 meter target out there with this M4, shoot the 55 grain XF193 M. My apologies for the wind noise in the mic. I don't have any cotton or anything to cover the mic. All right, part one. This part is gonna deal with a couple things I've seen people do wrong when they buy these rifles. And it's gonna go over some of the nuances of sighting the rifle in and some neat little tricks on shooting with iron sights. Now, the most common mistake I see people make when they get a rifle such as this is they get out, they're excited, they got themselves a nice little AR-15 you know, carbine and they get out and they start shooting right away and they haphazardly sight it in. And along with that, they only shoot it out to 25, 50 yards. Uh, you know, to each their own, but if you really wanna use this firearm correctly and effectively, if you sight it in correctly and you actually try shooting it at longer ranges, you really begin to appreciate how effective this little rifle is. Now with the sights, these rifles come in a lot of different uh, flavors and different configurations. I'm just going to talk about the basic A2 configuration. That's this right here, the A2 rear style uh, sight assembly, you can see here, and it has a standard front post assembly. This is basic configuration. I like this configuration because it allows me to place hits out to 500 meters pretty easily with this rifle. Now. When sighting in, you want to sight it in at 25 meters, not yards. Everything is in meters in this rifle, so remember that. This is a military rifle. The military deals in meters. They deal in the metric system. So make sure whenever you get your distances in for sighting, you're not sighting in at 25 yards. You're sighting in at 25 meters. Now, the rear sight, as you see right here, the standard A2 style aperture. You've got your windage knob, or excuse me, your elevation knob right here, and your windage knob up here. Your windage knobs should be centered. You're going to see hash marks all along the rear of the assembly right here below your peep sight. You want the hash mark right in the center hash mark, and you want this set on the 300 meter peep. There's two peeps to this. This is the 300, and if I flip it, you'll see the 0 to 200 meter, and it's marked. So make sure you're on the 300. Now, for the elevation, you want the rear sight to be adjusted on an M4 style carbine. You want it adjusted to where you see the 3-6 the or the 6-3 rather. You want to see it even. And it's pretty much, you want it dead. Once you get the uh, elevation windage tuned down as far as it'll go, you're going to see right here, I don't know if you can see closely on this, you can see how it's flat. M16A2s and A3s and A4s in the sighting procedure, they tell you to adjust it until your 6.3 is showing, 
and then you move forward a click for the A2s, A3s, or two clicks for the A4s. Now for the M4 style AR, you want it flush on the 6.3. Now this is where your front sight comes into play. All elevation adjustments are done with your front sight. You can use a front sight post or you can use the tip of a bullet. You depress a little detent in the front of the front sight here and you can turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Pretty much remember counterclockwise is uh, to go down, uh, clockwise is to go up. That's very important. All elevation adjustments when you're first sighting in this type of rifle is with your front sight post at 25 meters. Do not touch the rear elevation. Your windage, you go ahead and use your rear knob for windage and you adjust as necessary. Once you get your shots on target and you're grouping really tight and you're hitting the bullseye at 25 meters, stop. No more adjustments need to be made to the front sight post or the windage. You are set at a 300 meter zero. Now, Keep in mind with the 300 meter zero, just know that due to the path, uh, due to bullet trajectory, you're going to be shooting a few inches high at 100 and a few more inches high at 200. If I remember right, uh, was it like four inches, high, four inches high at 100, you're going to hit on the target and right about five to six inches high at 200. And then at 300, your bullet's going to come back down to your zero and you're going to be right at point of aim. Now, one thing people never think about with this rifle is when they shoot farther than 300, they are always using Kentucky windage. Now I understand, I, I understand in a tactical situation for military, if, if time is critical, you know, sometimes you just don't have time to adjust your sights. But if you're shooting at a shooting range or if time isn't as much of a factor, on this knob, you see that it's marked 6.3. Hopefully you can see that. All you have to do the 6.3 stands for 600 meters, 300 meters. Now, with it all the way down, you've got your battle sight set at 300 meters. If you need to engage a 400 meter target, which I'll tell you how to range your targets with iron sights here in a minute, turn the knob. Oops, turned it a little bit too far. There. You'll see a 4. Now I'm at 400 meters. If I see a 500 meter target, turn it a little bit more. There, I'm at a five. It might be hard to see on the camera, I apologize, the numbers are kind of small. If I see a 600 meter target, which is about the max effective range for this weapon, turn it again, and you'll see I'm back on the 6.3 mark, but now it's for the 600 meter. Now you can also see this sight assembly right here is risen, you can see the gap there. It's higher than it used to be. That's how you do your quick adjustments when you're shooting farther range. So just keep that in mind, and there, now I'm back on the 6.3 mark again. You can see the gap is gone because I've adjusted it back down to my 300 meter zero. So keep that in mind. If you have time, if you're just shooting at a shooting range and you know you're shooting at a 400 or 500 meter target, go ahead and adjust your sights. There's no reason for you to waste rounds doing the whole Kentucky, uh, Kentucky windage and elevation shooting when all you have to do is remember that your elevation knob is there for a reason. It's built and it's calibrated to the 5.56 round. It's not a precision instrument. Uh, the only way you're going to get more of a precision instrument is if you're using like a national match A2 style, uh, style upper. But this will get you there. This will get you on target. Uh, depending on loads, you may want to adjust one click one way or the other. If you want to fine tune it a little bit, that's up to you. But this will get you on target. Now. Now that sights, uh, adjustment of sights have been covered a little bit, again, the key points, zero it at 25 meters. And once it's zero to 25 meters, don't touch that front sight post. Don't rely on your Kentucky windage and elevation shooting here. If you're shooting out farther than 300 meters, use that elevation dial. That's what it's there for. You know, you've paid, you, you just think of it this way. You paid anywhere from $600 to $1,000 for this rifle. So you might as well use all the features of this rifle. You owe it to yourself. Uh, just if anything, you know, it's a waste of money if you're going to buy this rifle and not utilize it correctly, in my opinion. So remember that. Use this knob. Now, you might be wondering, well, wait a minute. How do I uh, range? How do I guesstimate my ranges? 
What if I'm not at a shooting range where the targets are at a known distance? Well, here's a couple of little tricks. And this is right out of the Army Field Manual. Uh, was it 3-22.9? It deals with marksmanship with these rifles. The trick is, with your front sight post, aim at your target. And if you're shooting at a torso size target, if the front sight post, if the target is the full width of the front sight post, I'm not talking about the assembly. I'm not talking about this whole assembly. I'm talking about just the front sight post. If you got a sight picture on that human sized target and it's exactly the width of a human uh, or the width of your front sight post, you're looking at roughly right around 175 meters away, give or take. If it's half the size, you're looking at roughly around 300-ish meters. And if it's one quarter the width of your sight post, you're looking at about 600 meters. So you can kind of graduate from there. You can kind of see what I'm getting at. It's kind of a really quick, rudimentary way to get a good guesstimate on where your target is. Now from there, if you're, uh, you know, let's say you're shooting the targets around 400 meters. You set your sights on it, it looks to be about half the width, and you shoot around and it hits just a little bit low on the target or whatnot, then go ahead and make your adjustments as necessary, walk those rounds in. That's a common term that's used in the military. Walking the round in is just mean, it's just, all it means is if you see your round hit low and you're on a time constraint, just aim a little bit higher, fire off the next round. If, it's, if that next round is still just a tad low, aim a little bit higher, and usually within the next two rounds or so, your rounds will be on target. It's a common technique used with rifles, and it's a very common technique used when you're talking about crew served weapons. So I hope that trick will help you a little bit. Another thing I highly recommend when you get a rifle such as this is to get something like this. I pulled this off the uh, internet, typed it up, all that good stuff. You know, you can pull the field manuals. Field manual 3-22.9, uh, you can find anywhere on the internet. It's a good resource. It tells all about these rifles. And you can kind of crunch your numbers from that, um, and it will get you there. This is pretty much a range card. And I also have my sight, post my sight post method written down. That's just because, number one, when it comes to stuff like that, don't let your ego get to you. Sometimes you might forget or you might have a brain flub. It's always nice to have that reference there with you. So now, I kind of covered the zeroing uh, basics. I've also given you a little bit of uh, tricks with your front sight. Also, along with the front sight there, remember, if it's less than 300 meters, if you're looking through your front, your, you got a sight picture on your target, and it's bigger than your front sight post, it's going to be closer, it's going to be more like around 100 meters, 90 meters, something like that, if it's bigger. Now you want to make sure that if you're shooting less than 300 meters, your rounds are going to impact a little bit high. So if you're aiming at a torso size target at, let's say, about 150 meters, instead of aiming directly at the center, you might want to aim at where his diaphragm would be. Aim at the diaphragm, the rounds are going to go up a little bit high, and they should hit right about upper uh, center mass right where you want them. So just keep that in mind. The bullet travels in an arc just like a football does. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're out there shooting. Bullets do not, even though they seem they even though they seem that they uh, travel really fast and really straight, they travel in an arc. It's just they fly so fast that you can't see that arc. Uh, these rounds coming out of this thing is right around 3,000 feet per second on average, depending on the load. So you're not going to see it but you'll notice it at farther ranges when you're trying to shoot and when you're aiming on target and your rounds are hitting low. Now, another thing I'd like to cover with this. Inspection. How many people honestly inspect this rifle? Not a lot. Some people may think they do. Uh, there's a few out there, you know, when they clean their rifle really well, they put it back together. But do you really take a close look at the rifle to see any problems developing right off the bat? Now, inspection, what I mean by inspection is looking at all of the pieces of your rifle, your rear sight assembly, your front sight post, your barrel, your uh, compensator slash flash hider, your magazines, how your magazine fits into the rifle. 
your trigger, trigger guard, your stock. With these style of rifles, you've got the adjustable stock. Can it adjust to each position without any problem? Another part of the inspection of the rifle is your function test. Now, the function test is done when you have this rifle all back together. A basic function test is as follows. I'll try and show you here the best I can. First off, make sure the rifle is clear, of course. First thing you do when you get the rifle back together, charge a charging handle, kind of like, uh, you know, to simulate uh, loading a round. Put your selector lever on safe, try and squeeze the trigger. It should not fire. If it fires, then something's wrong. Now, take your selector lever, switch it to fire. Squeeze the trigger and hold it back. You should hear the hammer drop. Cycle your bolt, let it go forward, continue to hold that trigger back. Now, listen to this when I let go of the trigger. That's your sear reset. That should happen every time. Just like that. That's how you know your trigger is working all right. Also, another good function test. When you squeeze the trigger, go ahead and squeeze it so the hammer drops. Do not cycle another, uh, do not cycle your bolt. Go ahead and try and put it on safe. It should not go on safe. That's one little trick for doing a function test. Also remember, when you're inspecting this rifle, the most important part to inspect is inside your bolt carrier group. When you have that thing completely disassembled, you want to look at it and make sure there's no cracks, stress marks, anything like that. Because if it is, then there's an issue. You need to have that bolt replaced. Also look in the chamber. The chamber is another high pressure area of this firearm. So you want to make sure there's no cracks, no... Uh, obvious signs of excessive wear and tear, like when the lugs have been torn off or whatnot, you want to make sure everything's good to go. If something doesn't look right, most likely it isn't. And I recommend to take the rifle in to a qualified uh, armor or gunsmith and have them look at it. So, all right, this video is running a little bit longer than my normal videos. I hope you guys enjoy some of the information. It's a lot of talking, but it's stuff that I'd like to get out because a lot of people don't think about it. Again, if you take anything away from this video is I want you to take away is the importance of using the sights correctly. Now I've got, I've had some people laugh at me and whatnot saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Miller's kind of a crazy guy thinking he can engage 500 meter targets with iron sights. If you got your iron sights set up correctly, you can, and it's very easily, and it's not hard to see a 500 meter target as long as your eyesight is good. Uh, if your eyesight is not good, then I highly recommend you either do LASIK or get your glasses or do whatever you need to do to square away those eyes so your eyesight is good. So again, your sights, make sure they're sighted incorrectly, 25 meters. Pay attention. If you have any questions, Again, go on the internet, look up Field Manual 3-22.9. That is the Army Field Manual. You, you, we're not breaking any OPSEC rules or any classified rules or whatnot. It's commonly available on the internet. It goes over basic stuff on sighting in these rifles. It gives you a lot of good pointers. Or if you just don't have access, you know, uh, you can talk to somebody that does know, that has a lot of experience around the ARs. Stick with the basics. Sight in to what it's meant to be sight in. There's a lot of neat little tricks out there. Some people sight them in at 50 meters. Some people do all these neat little cool Gucci tricks with these rifles. Stick with what the rifle is designed for. Uh, if anything, take the advice I've given on this video and cross-reference it with somebody like a Marine. Uh, Marines shoot these rifles out to 500 meters. They know they are trained uh, rifle marksmen. They're trained right off the bat in basic training. That's one thing they have above the other services like the Army, Navy, uh, and the Air Force. You know, typically Air Force and uh, Army, they only shoot out to 300 meters. That's really not that far. And you're not really challenging yourself. But Marines will shoot all the way out to 500. That's part of their basic rifleman course. So... You know, if you're kind of leery about listening to me and going, well, this guy's just an Air Force guy. What does he know about rifles? 
cross-reference everything with a Marine, listen to a Marine, and he'll, he or she will pretty much tell you the same thing. So all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Feel free to leave any tips, tricks that you have with the rifle. Um, again, any video responses, I'll approve. And uh, probably the next video or two, we'll get to the actual shooting and whatnot. I don't know when I'm going to post them up due to time constraints with my normal job and whatnot. But uh, I just wanted to make this video just to go over a few things that a lot of people don't think about. So, all right, thanks for watching. Keep that powder dry.